We're here in Atlanta, Georgia, with uh, Brian Vahaley, and uh, you might have seen him play on TV. This gentleman has done a lot of things in, in professional tennis, junior tennis, college tennis. He has done it all, and he's nice enough to sit down with us and uh, and talk today. Brian, thanks for being on the show. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, well, as you know, we talked earlier about this. This is mostly uh, for junior tennis players, their parents, that type of thing. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, going all the way back to the juniors, how you got started, and, and a little bit about your story? Sure. It's. I mean, it's tough to navigate certainly for juniors um, for me I started probably when I was four or five years old it was back um, just playing a, a part of my local club I think my parents were trying to keep me busy and out of trouble so um, you know I started I started playing some tournaments when I was five or six years old just to kind of have some fun with it again my parents had no idea what uh, what they were doing uh, and we just started at some local levels started playing a little bit in the state and uh, you know, for, from that point, it, it's tough to say. It was such a long and kind of winding road for me through the junior career. Kind of at some point, it started to become, uh, you know, a thought that you know maybe you could start to play in college and would there be a professional career outside of it. But you know, initially for me, it was about. You know, it's just kind of about having fun and and a little bit of competition as a kid. Okay, and you grew up here in Atlanta. I did. Or? Yeah, I, I was born in New Jersey, but my family moved down here when I was four or five years old. And Atlanta is a huge tennis town. We've got probably about two hundred thousand, you know, I think people in the leagues in the in the city. So there were always tennis courts around, and it was really an opportunity for me to make friends, for me to socialize, for me to, um, you know, I mean, I, you, you're playing sports and you're staying active as a kid. Sure. When did you play your first tournament? Uh, first tournament was probably about seven or eight years old. I actually wow. am still friends with the guy that I played my first round. Is that right? Um, yeah, it was it, seven? yeah, we, um, <laughs> you know, he actually ended up turning pro also. He played for the wow. University of Georgia. Jeez. And, um, you know, it's funny experiences to look back on, you know, where we everybody would beat each other and cry about it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, uh, right. you know, the, yeah. the trials and tribulations of, of those early years. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we started seven or eight years old and started playing some tournaments. But, again, it was always if anything just something fun to do learn competition learn how to win learn how to lose learn how to uh, sportsmanship I mean those are more of the big picture things my parents were looking to, to get across to me sure sure so did you you started playing like seven eight right in the tens you went right into the yeah tens? so I started the ten and unders okay. and um, you know who in the heck knows what that was like it was just sort of moon balls and everybody's learning a little bit about the game learning how right. to play you get your first um, look into some of the cheating that you feel like it can yeah. go on that happened uh, to you too huh yeah I mean it happens to all of us and <laughs> yeah, uh, Changing the scores, everything like that. Yeah, so right. um, sure. you learn a lot, and it's an individual sport. And I think the more and more you start to play, the more pressure that starts to pick up a little bit because rankings come into play. And I think that adds a dynamic, you know, when you're out there on the court. So um, it, it, it was an interesting time, but at that point, it was still just a lot of fun. I mean, it was friends getting together. You know, we'd go and swim and you know play basketball when we weren't playing tennis. So it was just more of, I don't know. It's just it was what we did growing up. There really wasn't. There, there wasn't necessarily a thought to, to sectionals, nationals, or anything like that at that point. Were you good out right off the bat in the tens? Were you ranked really high right off the bat? You know, I mean, I, I had good hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. So, and that was really what it was all about at that point. I mean, okay. it was not about skills or power or anything like that. I just knew how to hit the ball over the net. Okay, so you were ranked high. Pretty <laughs> so much I was ranked high. Yeah. I mean, I was ranked, you know, in the top three or four in the state. Mm -hmm. um, did I make much of it? No. I mean, I just to me it was. I never really understood. Uh, I mean, it, it was just, it was a number you were trying to shoot for, the number one guy. I was never the best guy, so I always had something to shoot towards. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say when I was eight years old, I was in the top four or five in the state in the 10 and under. So I knew that I had some element At of eight, a... Eight, wow. I, I yeah. mean, I knew I had some element of a gift with it, but... I mean, come on, you're eight years old. It's not like I was yeah, some right. teen, you know, kid prodigy at that point. Yeah, right. So, so then do you, but you must have got, got better as you went even because you went up the ladder so fast. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it builds. You know, it's yeah. one of those sports that you just don't know. You can't, I, you know, I admire when you hear the Williams story or um, – I'm trying to think. Martina Hingis, who was named after, you know, Navratilova. They yeah. knew as a kid they were going to be a professional. Um, we were just trying to have fun. I mean, right. we were kids who had a lot of energy and were looking to do something with it. Right. Um, certainly, as you did well in the in the state tournaments, you wanted to play sectionals. I mean, you you just you always wanted to challenge yourself and see how far you could go. But there was never you never even really thought in the grand scheme of things you were that good at that point because right. you know you see the, the better players play in the 18 and unders and things like that and it's like you know I'm just moonballing. Yeah, they look like God. Yeah I mean they're 14, unbelievable yeah. who, who am I as a 10 and 12 yeah. year old to do it but right. um, certainly you know you just kind of stayed with it I mean I think it was as a kid as an insecure 10 11 year old it's fun to do something you win at. Right. And I was winning at it, so I wanted to keep playing. <laughs> sure. When did you know, at what point did you know, hey, I'm, I'm really good at this. I might have a shot at college and then maybe even a pro career. How old were you at that point? I think it was probably, for me, I was about 13 years old. Um, okay. I made my first national mm -hmm. tournament. And uh, when I went, 
obviously I had no expectations when I was there. I was just excited to be a part of it. Um, I beat the number one guy in the country that year. Oh, and I win. think, yeah, for, <laughs> so for me, that was a sense of if I'm that good in the United States, uh, maybe there's something to this. Yeah. Um, now I was, you know, I was four foot ten with a with a bu with a buzz braces and glasses. Uh -huh. So my athletic look was not strong. But you beat the number one guy in the country. But, so it, I, but I mean, it, you know, you look at you know you look at who you imagine top tier athletes. Yeah. And I was not it. I mean, I was as nerdy as it could get. So. Um, to think that I had, was going to be a professional athlete is would have been about the funniest thing you ever could have told me. I mean, I did not hit my growth spurt until I was 15 or 16 years old. So while I was winning, you know, most of the national coaches even would tell me, you're not going anywhere. I mean, look at yourself. So, and I mean, I, it's hard not to agree. I mean, I looked terrible, but I, I was a very good competitor. Just kept winning. Yeah, I knew how to, <laughs> well, I knew how to win. I mean, I knew how they, I knew how to beat guys. Uh -huh. It wasn't necessarily that good at tennis. What, I just was your, what, was, what was it that you were thinking when you said, I know how to beat guys? What does that mean? Exactly? Um, I had a great coach, and okay. I think that's one of the most important things to find early on, is find somebody who can mentor you as well as give you great advice, um, certainly for the amount of time you spend on the court. And, sure. um, you know, I had a guy who taught strategy. Who was and your it coach? Was, it was Jerry Atlanta? Baskin in Atlanta. Okay. So he actually is also coaches now, Robbie Ginepri in Atlanta, oh, who's, wow. you know, sure. got to the semifinals of the U.S. Open a, a few years back. So, you know, for him, it was all about how to beat your opponent, not necessarily playing your game so much, because for me, I had no game because I was 100 pounds. Yeah. Um, so how do I beat guys that have a lot more skill than I do and yet still figure out a way to get into their head, um, figure out what their weaknesses are, and attack the weakness? You're one of those guys that never missed a ball. I can tell by the way yeah, you're talking. Yeah, I mean, you never missed. I played a lot of you guys, and, and I lost you know, almost you, all of you. Sure, <laughs> and, and you had to know how to break guys down. Yeah. And ultimately, we were taught that everybody has a breaking point. Right. And if you keep flicking guys in the head, you know, 50, 70, 100 times, everybody will crack. Right. And that was always, for me, a mindset, regardless if I was winning or losing. Okay. People will hit their breaking point. And whether it's fatigue, whether it's, you know, a variety of things, um, but your goal was to try and find that. And that, for me, it was not about winning and losing. It was very much structured around, could you break this guy? And that was the challenge that was kind of put before me. And so... Even though, to me, it was a very basic strategy, but it worked for a long time. I just never thought, you know, I'm watching Agassi on TV, and it's like, how the heck are you going to break, you know, yeah, guys right, like that? Sure. So clearly this strategy can take me so far. My goal, you know, after a while, really, when I was, you know, 15, 16 years old, was just if I could get a college scholarship, if I could dupe sure. some coach into thinking that, you know, <laughs> this short, small guy um, was good enough to play tennis at a collegiate level, I will gladly take their sponsorship dollars and right. and get an education because for me again um, my my tennis game was about my mind and I was looking to cultivate that by going to college and and certainly my parents needed the financial assistance to do it sure and you decided on the University of Virginia one of the great schools I did right? um, I loved it it was it was a, experience? it was a great experience um, you know I wasn't sure when I was leaving uh, the junior ranks I was you know myself and James Blake were in the top one or two in the country at the time. Wow. And, um, That's in college? Or? That was in juniors. Okay, okay in 18. That was in okay. juniors. And, uh, you know, he ended up going to Harvard. I ended up going to Virginia, two places that weren't necessarily the upper echelon of, of, uh, of tennis at that point in time. Um, but I was looking for more than just a tennis experience because ultimately I didn't think I was going to go pro. Hmm. Um, and I wanted the academics. I wanted a great team. I wanted a great coach. Um, you know, I was looking for the big picture. Right. Uh, for me, yeah. it was always kind of looking for balance. And, Would you recommend um, that to people who are, are, you know, 16, 15, 16, 17, looking at? Should they look at the big picture? Or they well, I mean, certainly, school? you know, it just depends. I mean, it, it all depends on your personality type. Okay. Um, for me, you have to recognize that less than a hundredth of a percent chance that you're going to make it. Right. Um, if you're in the top one, 200 in the world, you still, in theory, haven't made it financially. Yeah. So, you know, what, what do we have now? Five guys in the top hundred? Yeah. Um, you know, there's millions of people playing. Right. For you to actually think you're going to be that guy yeah, it's almost is a little bit, a little bit crazy. Yeah. Now, sometimes you need to be a little crazy in order to be the best, but I think that has to be balanced. And I think it has to be balanced with some level of perspective that, for me, my parents were able to give me at, at a pretty young age. So, you know, when I looked at schools, certainly there's a lot of things to look at. Um, Virginia just had it all for me. I looked at who the seniors were on the team. I looked at who the seniors were throughout the, the campus, and I thought, that's who I want to be when I grow up. And so not only was that from an educational standpoint, but it was um, you know, even in tennis. I mean, I, I just admired the balance that those guys had in their life. And for me, and what I was trying to achieve in the, you know, in the grand scheme, that was very important. And then you did well in the NCAAs, and did that take you to? Yeah, I mean, it certainly changed things because, again, I grew up going to the NCAAs right, and watching yeah. you know, at, at University of Georgia, and those right. guys were good, yeah. and I was not. Yeah. And uh, 
Next thing I know, I'm you know in the top. I was ranked number two in college. James was number one in, the, in Division in One. NCAA. Wow. And um, you know, here he's going to go turn pro. You know, the question was put before me whether or not I wanted to do it. Right. Um, I finally had grown at least. So, but I was still. I had a very skinny frame and a very weak game in terms of a, from a pro perspective. Um, and education was important to me. It was important to my family. So I decided to stick it out, get my degree. Um, I knew that no really college athlete, four-year graduate before me really had made any kind of success. Mm -hmm. So I felt like in some ways I was making a choice, but I also, and this is just sort of a personal determination, I never felt like I couldn't achieve something that hadn't been done before me. And I think right. that was because I sort of took myself out of what was standard and what was, um, I don't know, what was expected a little bit. And I just tried to focus on being the best that I could be regardless of who had done what before me. And okay. I felt like I could have it both. I felt like I could have an education and I felt like my education could enhance the way I played on the court. Because certainly I saw a lot of very immature players. And I still, as I watch the Pro Tour, as I watch the French Open, um, I think there's a lot of immature players. Um, they just happen to have a lot more ability than I do. Yeah. <laughs> so.